Welcome to my Draconic Sire Guide. This build changed after the mid-set update, so we play it a little bit differently in set 5.5. In this video, I will go over the build, what items you make, how to play the early, mid, and late game, what you do if you get contested, then I will go over some in-depth positioning examples. The build is extremely linear, as your level 6 and 7 board is not flexible at all. Your level 6 board always wants to be this, and there are some exceptions to this rule that I will cover in the mid-game part of the video. Here we have 3 Draconic and 3 Abomination. You prefer Udir and Set as the two other Draconic units, as they are cheap and provide frontline. If you find an early Galio, he goes over the Udir. Once you get to level 7, you add in Fiddlesticks for 4 Abomination. From there, you look to go level 8. Once you hit level 8, you add an Ivern or Volibear for 2 Revenant. When you are level 8, you either slow roll for Zyra 3, or you replace her with Heimerdinger. Once you hit 3-star Zyra, or a Heimerdinger replacement, you want to end up with this combat level 8, and then look to go level 9. You don't go for any other 3-stars than Zyra, so sell the extra Udyrs and sets for Eco. And I'll touch more on when you don't go for Zyra 3-star and play Heimerdinger instead in the late game part of the video. Zyra or Heimerdinger is the primary carry. Luckily, they want the same exact items. Zyra has one core item, and that is Spear of Sochin. Since she has a large mana pool, this item will let her cast more often and deal a lot more damage. Rageblade can be a replacement for Sojin, but is not as good. The second item wants to be a damage item. This can be Jewel Gauntlet, Deathcap, Archangels, or Hand of Justice. The third item for Zyra wants to be another damage or mana generating item like Rageblade, i.e. if you made Jewel Gauntlet, Giant Slayer, or another one of the AP items mentioned as the second item. The monstrosity wants tank items, and since we primarily focus on Zyra items, we just slam whatever tank items we can on the abomination units. Most of the time, that will be three tank items. The only damage item you will ever make on him are Titans or Runan's Hurricane. The only time you will ever make a Hurricane is if you slam it on a Callista 2 star in the early game to save HP. You never make this late game unless you don't have any other options. Titans is not great, but it's not bad either. If you get an early Nunu 2 star or a Fiddlesticks, you can put it on one of them, as they use this item quite well. The other two items for the monstrosity wants to be tank items. These are items like Warmogs, Bramble, Geeklaw, Redemption, and Sunfire. Which abomination units you put the items on doesn't really matter, although you prefer to have at least one item on Nunu and Fiddlesticks late game. In the late game, good items to take from carousels or armories are Morello for Volibear, AP items on Fiddlesticks or Teemo, or generic aura items like Seek's Chalice Trapclaw to buff up your Zyra or Heimer even more. The best Radiant items for this comp are Sunfire or Ionic Spark on an Abomination unit. This means you're getting two of these active on the map, so an entire team can be covered with Sunfire within 5 or 10 seconds. Ionic Spark shreds magic resistance, and since almost all of our damage is AP, this increases our DPS by a ton. Besides those two items, you will do well if you pick up any Radiant version of the Zyra items or tank items and put them on the Monstrosity or Zyra unit. If you get a spatula, you want to make Spellweaver Spat if you're playing Zyra so that you can get in for Spellweavers at level 8 with Velkos. If you're playing Heimerdinger, you take Renur Spat so you can get 4 Renurs at level 8 with Rakan, Heimer, and Ivern. The best emblems to pick up are Abomination. This will make your Monstrosity even tankier and he can actually do some damage at 4 star. Brawler Emblem is not bad, as you can fit in 4 Brawlers with Nunu, Volibear, and Set. Draconic Emblem is only something you grab if you are really healthy and in a position to put in 5 Draconic. Never take this Emblem if you are behind, unless you have no other good options. The carousel priority for this comp is Rod, Tier, Belt, then Chain. Since this comp is focused around Draconic, we want to always hold Draconic units in the early game. The dream scenario is to have 3 Draconic on 2-1. Other openers that work are 3 Skirmishers with Udyr, Callista with either A-Bomb or Redeemed Frontline, Ziggs, and Brand with any Frontline. Once we have our opener, we need to make items, and as a general rule, we want to make an item if we have 4 or more components. Some items that are strong early and that transition well into Draconic late game are Sojin, Bramble, Declaw, Hodge, Archangels, Jewel Gauntlet, Deathcap, Hurricane, Redemption, and Warmogs. Since we want 3 Draconic as early as possible, we always pre-level to 4 on stage 2-1. This is to get access to 3 cost champions as early as possible, and we need Zyra and Nunu for this comp, and getting an early Ash can also enable 3 Draconic, which is great. Generally, with this comp, we play for a loss streak more often than we play for a win streak, as we roll down at level 6 on 3-2 in a lot of cases. If you want to learn more about how to play the early game, check out my guide, where I go in-depth on the subject. 
At the Krugs round, you should have more direction towards the comp. The general requirements to play Draconic Zyra is to have one component for Sojin and at least one component for another Zyra item. The units we have here also really matter, so we definitely want to have as many E-Bomb and Draconic units as possible. If you have none, good luck because you will need it on your 3-2 rolldown. In the mid game, we want to be level 6 on stage 3-2. Here we need to roll until we have at least 3 Draconic and we really want 3 Abomination as well although other generic strong frontline units can substitute the monstrosity tank. Because we sometimes have to roll a lot here, be aware of your potential pivots. You will likely be offered multiple of them. The most common pivots you can make are Dombringer Karma or Redeemed or Abomination Velkos. Once you're somewhat stable at level 6, focus on saving HP and riding your streak. Note that this comp has a delayed power spike due to how the Draconic eggs work, so maintaining a loss streak is not bad to also reach that orb once you get to 40 HP. At stage 4-1, you will level to 7 and roll down for this board. The most important thing is hitting 4 A-bomb with fiddlesticks. Replacing Udir with Galio is not a big deal, but it's definitely nice. Here you can also play 5 Draconic if you hit it, but be aware that you will be playing a weak board as you can't fit an Abomination at level 7, in this case. So only play 5 Draconic here if you're high HP, and then pivot out of 5 Draconic at the Raptor turn and play Abomination instead. Also note that sometimes if you're high HP, typically around 70 HP or higher, you can push level 8 instead of rolling. Look to go level 8 on either stage 4-5 or 5-1. Note that this option is a lot more appealing if the golden 40 HP orb contains a lot of gold, as you will have even more gold to roll through at level 8. At stage 5-1, you want to be level 8. From here, you will usually roll for either Zyra 3 or Heimerdinger. If you are far off of Zyra 3 star, meaning you have 6 of them or less, you will generally want to pivot to Heimerdinger if you find him at this point. If you hit Heimer 2 star before Zyra 3, it's always Heimer 2 star, no questions asked. Once you do hit Zyra 3 or Heimer 2, and or you are really high HP and gold, you want to go to level 9. Keep using the Draconic Eggs to snowball your Econ, as it will allow you to go 9 earlier than most other players. Most of the time, you will have this board at level 8 when still running Draconic, or this board if you took it out. Note that you run the same board if you have Heimerdinger instead of Zyra, as you get Renewer through Ivern. The only real flex spot in this comp is the Teemo. He can be replaced with other units like Gwen, Diego, another Heimerdinger or Zyra, or Garen. If you high roll and make it to level 9, the most capped version of this comp looks like this. Only take out A-Bomb for Garen, Karma, and Syndra once they are 2-starred, and throw your tank items on Garen or Volibear. Getting contested on this comp is not as bad as you'd think. Don't get me wrong, you always prefer to be uncontested, but since we can pivot to Heimerdinger later, not hitting Zyra 3 is not a big deal. You still want to go for Zyra 3 star though, as sometimes you can get really lucky, or your contester can just get really unlucky. When contested, it's also important to try and fast 8, if possible, as you want to be able to hit Heimerdinger in case you can't go for Zyra 3 star. In addition, be aware of the potential pivots that this comp has, which are Karma and Velkos. General positioning looks like this. Here we have Zyra in either corner, and Bran next to her. Callista is frontline so she dies and the monstrosity comes out quicker. Galio is dead center to taunt enemies and make them go towards the center. The rest of the units are frontlined, make sure to put Nunu in a spot where he can eat the most units possible. Now moving on to some in-depth positioning examples. Against the first guy, the big threat is Aphilios. We have Galio in the center to draw the enemy frontline towards the middle where Zyra will ult. Nunu is positioned to potentially eat the Sejuani. Set is on far right side, so he walks and ults both Sejuani and Rel once she dashes. Ivern is second row to make sure he casts. Zyra is opposite side of the Aphilios. Against the second guy, the big threat is Karma. Zyra is positioned opposite side of Karma. Galio is once again in the middle to taunt other enemies towards the dead center. Nunu is positioned to eat Gragas. We try to spread out as much as possible against Karma, but it is a bit hard with so many melee units. Against the third guy, the big threat is Nocturne and Viego. We frontline Zyra as there are no threats that can attack her. Brand, Ivern, and Nunu are creating a line that blocks assassins from jumping next to Zyra. Nunu is in the backline to hopefully eat one of the assassins. 
Galio is a bit closer to Nocturne to hopefully taunt him with his ultimate. The other units in the bottom right are Nocturne Bait. Against the fourth guy, the big threat is Misfortune and Viego. We have Callista to be Thresh Bait, and we are turtling around Zyra to keep her safe from Viego. Galio will hopefully taunt Viego and make him go away from Zyra. It's important to be opposite side of MF to make sure she gets stunned and doesn't ult too many times with Archangels. Thank you so much for watching. If you learned something, please leave a like and subscribe to the channel. Comment down below what video you want me to make next. And if you want to get better at TFT, join the Discord. We got over 3,000 other players there who are hungry to climb. And if you want to get coached by me, the information is over on the Discord server as well. So take care and see you in the next video.